Egypt, Rome and China gave mankind the pyramids, the Colosseum and the Great Wall of China. They also came up with things less grandiose, but no less practical, now it is hardly possible to do without alarm clocks, computers and helicopters. We talk about useful things and unusual technologies that appeared much earlier than it seems. Humanity has dreamt of conquering the sky for millennia. The first tests of the aircraft took place back in the 4th century BC, as it should be, in the Celestial Empire. The ancient Chinese toy helicopter was a bamboo stalk with feathers attached to its blades. Unwinding the bamboo dragonfly between the palm trees, it was launched to the stars. Many centuries later, children's fun inspired George Cayley, the father of modern aeronautics, to create a real helicopter. Frivolous entertainments were soon followed by more serious discoveries. In the 6th century, the Chinese assembled the first hang glider capable of withstanding the weight of an adult. However, only the lucky outcasts received a portion of the thrills, the criminals were tied to a glider and pushed off a cliff into the abyss. The poor guy was separated from landing by about two miles of uncontrolled flight. The Chinese have a legend about how in the late 15th, early 16th century a man named Wang who challenged the cosmos. The complex structure he built was supposed to work on the principle of a modern rocket and rise into the air thanks to powder shells attached to giant kites. Getting into the car, the brave inventor picked up the wing and told the servants to set fire to the rockets. But the aircraft consisted only of bamboo and paper, and therefore immediately caught fire and in a few seconds exploded together with its creator. However, there is a version that the legend of Wang who was invented by journalist John Alfred Watkins, who described it in an article for Scientific American magazine in 1909. Although rockets and gunpowder were indeed invented in China, but much earlier, during the Han Dynasty 206 BC, 220 AD. The idea of a submarine can be found in the works of Leonardo da Vinci. The first scientific drawings of a submarine, or, rather, an apparatus capable of vertically submerging into water, were made in 1578 by William Bourne, a mathematician and former gunner for the Royal Navy of Great Britain. For almost 30 years, the submarine remained an abstract idea, until in 1605 Magnus Pegel, a German physician and mathematician, based on Bourne's scientific research, built a submarine. The experiment failed, the ship sank during its first dive. But 15 years later, thanks to the talent of the Dutch inventor Cornelius Drebbel, the first working prototype of a boat capable of moving underwater was born. The diving depth was 4 meters and was regulated with the help of leather bellows, and a long pole was used to move along the bottom, which in the following models was replaced by paddles. The invention was a great success, and in 1624 even King James I of England tried it out. The progenitor of the car was the three-wheeled brainchild of French inventor Nicolas Joseph Cunho. The steam tractor, built by him in 1769, was intended for towing artillery. The car was driven by two people, it weighed more than a ton and required stopping every 12 minutes to maintain pressure in the steam boiler, it was placed under the car for refueling. The second version of the Kuhn trolley was already equipped with its own boiler, which made it possible to avoid forced stops. Then there was the first car accident in history, during the next launch, the control system jammed, and the car crashed into a wall at a deafening speed, about 4 kilometers h. With the beginning of the Great French Revolution, the government was not up to inventions, and work on the machine was stopped. Having lost a source of funding, Cunho fled to Belgium, where he lived in poverty. In 1804, Napoleon invited Cunho to Paris, where the scientist died. Even today, residents of the Nordic countries have a hard time in winter. To speed up and at the same time secure their travels, the inhabitants of the Scandinavian peninsula invented skates back in 300 BC, sliding on them on frozen rivers and lakes, residents of the coldest regions saved up to 10% of energy. Ice skating was used not only in Scandinavia, but also in the territory of the modern Netherlands, Great Britain, Russia and China. Instead of blades, pointed plates made of any available material, animal bones, walrus tusks, wood or even bamboo were tied to shoes. Today, people are willing to give thousands of dollars for a snow-white smile and fresh breath. The fashion for beautiful healthy teeth dates back to the 5th century BC, when the Egyptians made the world's first toothpaste. It was prepared according to the following recipe, they took one drachma of rock salt, two drachmas of mint, one drachma of dried iris, 20 grains of pepper, one drachma is about 0.4 grams, everything was crushed and mixed. 
but toothbrushes, twigs with disheveled ends, were invented later. The first specimens found in Egyptian tombs date back only to the 3rd century BC. A more familiar brush with pig bristles appeared in the 15th century in China. Although the Egyptians did not abuse chocolate and cakes, at that time teeth quickly wore out, the reason for this was the way grain was crushed. Some small stones used to grind cereals got into the flour and destroyed the tooth enamel, exposing the pulp where the infection had developed. In order to somehow overcome the unpleasant smell, chewing lozenges based on frankincense, myrrh, cinnamon and honey were invented in Egypt in the 4th century. The drill has become the pinnacle of ancient dentistry. The age of the first patients who lived on the territory of modern India is about 9,000 years. Cavities up to 3.5 mm deep were found on the teeth of these sufferers, obvious traces of surgical intervention. However, the sufferings of the patients were not in vain, the reconstruction of the method showed its reliability and effectiveness. The eyes are one of the most sensitive and difficult parts of the human body to operate on. But this did not prevent the Indian doctor Sushruta Bauxite from describing and performing the first cataract surgery back in the 6th century BC, long before the advent of modern laser technologies. The procedure was performed using a special curved needle that pushed the cataract out of the lens. After the operation, the eye was moistened with warm oil and bandaged. Although cataract removal was almost always successful, surgical intervention was allowed only if absolutely necessary. Leonardo da Vinci first spoke about a less radical method of vision correction, contact lenses, in 1508. And in 1637, René Descartes, a famous French mathematician and philosopher, developed the first set of lenses, which were glass tubes filled with water. At the end of the tube was a magnifying glass, which was selected individually. All this dubious sterility design was tightly attached to the cornea. It is not surprising that the first lenses were not widely used, it was impossible to blink in them. The first successful pair was invented more than two centuries later by the German ophthalmologist Adolf Fick. New glass lenses could be worn for two hours. Plastic surgery is not new today. But this was also commonplace in 300 to 1600 BC. According to various estimates, descriptions of experiments with human skin are contained in Egyptian manuscripts of that time. In 600 BC, nose reconstruction operations were in great demand in India. Amputation of the nose at that time was one of the forms of punishment, it was often lost in armed conflicts. In order to somehow hide the injuries, Indian doctors have developed a method of restoring the nose by transplanting skin from the forehead. A little later, in the 1st century AD, the first recorded fat removal procedure was carried out, according to the records of Pliny the Elder the author of Natural History, the son of the Roman consul Lucius Apron was miraculously cured of obesity thanks to this procedure. Our ancestors also took care of contraception. In addition to decoctions of mahogany bark, lemon, or even crocodile manure, they also used more effective methods of protection against sexual infections and unwanted pregnancy. Mankind owes the invention of condoms to the ancient Egyptians again. Not only frescoes depicting men in appropriate vestments have been preserved, but also silk bags on ribbons decorated with precious stones, they were sent to the afterlife together with the dead. According to one version, such weekend condoms were used for ceremonies. The existence of less pretentious and more functional variants is not known for certain, full-fledged condoms from the intestines and bladders of livestock, magic amulets, as well as the unreliable method of Vatican roulette appeared later. The Romans already had elevators. With the help of mechanical lifts in Rome of the first century, gladiators and animals were brought to the arena of the Colosseum, and later, during the reign of Nero, the scenery in the theater was moved. In the small town of Herculaneum, a mini elevator was used to deliver dishes from the kitchen to the upper floors. All these mechanisms were powered by the power of draft animals or slaves. In the 7th century, the first lift appeared in the Sinai Monastery in Egypt, and in India and China, similar devices, but with mechanical pedals, were used to lift water from rivers and lakes. The Greeks also did not stand aside and invented vending machines. The first prototype was created by Heron of Alexandria in 215 BC. The machine was intended for selling consecrated water before entering the temple and worked as follows. A coin dropped into a slot fell into a pocket attached to a jug, and he bent down, measuring out a portion of water to the buyer. Then the coin fell into a kind of piggy bank, and the jug returned to its original position. One of the mandatory elements of a more or less decent shopping center are automatic doors. They were also invented by Heron of Alexandria, 
the doors opened as a result of the coordinated work of cargo, water, and air flows. During the religious ceremony, the parishioners observed an unusual special effect, as if the breath of God opens the doors. Later sound effects were added, God started blowing into an invisible trumpet. Our ancestors also took care of comfort in the toilets. The nobility of the Cretan Minoan civilization began to equip palaces with toilets as early as 1800 BC. By the way, the first shower also appeared quite a long time ago. In Hellas, water was supplied to public baths through an extensive network of municipal water supply. From Egyptian beauties, modern girls have adopted not only the art of applying makeup, but also fashion. On frescoes in Egyptian tombs, archaeologists have discovered the first heels, more precisely, platform shoes. In 3500 BC, such shoes were worn by representatives of the nobility, both men and women, which distinguished them from barefoot representatives of the lower class. Butchers also walked on heels, this made it easier to move around the bloody carcasses. The most popular team game in the world was invented by the Chinese 2000 years ago. Kuju, an analog to football, was played with a heavy leather ball stuffed with feathers. The game was an excellent training for the legs, and therefore, during the period of the fighting kingdoms, soldiers often chased the ball. Later, infiltrated elite, the ball was simplified, and the emperors began to hold whole tournaments at specially equipped venues. Back in the 2nd, 3rd centuries, the Egyptians were not averse to playing skittles, or rather, to rolling a ball into a hole in the middle of a hollow hollowed out in a stone. Not far from Cairo, in the village of Narmudios, a bowling field was discovered, where archaeologists discovered paths about 4 meters long, 20 centimeters wide and 10 deep. The opponents stood at different ends of the groove and simultaneously launched balls, one player, a big ball, the other, a small one. The first one was supposed to prevent the second one from hitting the hole. The winner was the one who rolled a small ball into the hole the most times. Different variations of pizza were found among the Persians of the 5th century BC, with dates and a banana, and among the ancient Egyptians, but the Greeks in the period of antiquity turned out a dish closest to today's analogue, a flatbread with onions, garlic and herbs, seasoned with olive oil. The Romans adopted the idea of Greek baking, seasoning it with honey and fresh vegetables. According to legend, spaghetti, or rather noodles, came to Europe from China. Allegedly, Marco Polo, appreciating the cheapness of manufacture and long shelf life, decided to introduce the homeland to this dish, which the Chinese have been eating for more than 4,000 years. In fact, spaghetti appeared in Italy even before the voyage of the famous navigator, the first mention of them dates back to 1279. Without an alarm clock anywhere, God forbid you oversleep at your favorite work. Plato also used a clesidra, a water alarm clock, when he called students to class. It consisted of two connected vessels. The water from the upper bulb displaced the air from the lower one, and the airflow was directed to the groove, it was she who gave the signal. Something similar was invented in ancient China, marks were applied to a board soaked in resin and sawdust, by which it was possible to determine the time, and a weight was attached to the desired serif. The pill was set on fire, and as soon as the fire reached the thread, the weight fell on a metal stand. Although many people forgot about batteries in the era of lithium batteries, back in the early noughties they were used everywhere, from a flashlight to a pocket radio. The first battery appeared in the 2nd century BC on the territory of modern Iraq, long before the invention of electricity. The mobile power supply was a 12-centimeter clay vessel, inside of which there was a copper cylinder with a metal rod. In all likelihood, the device was used for galvanizing, that is, coating the metal with a layer of another metal, such as gold or silver. However, there is a version that it is just a vase. Even now, in the age of skyscrapers and wireless technologies, humanity has not figured out how to protect itself from natural disasters. To predict the approaching earthquakes, Chinese astronomer Zhang Heng designed the first seismograph in the 2 century AD shortly before the crash, the detector began to shake, and one of the dragons, arranged according to parts of the world, spewed a ball. He fell into the mouth of the toad, indicating the location of the source of the earthquake. The first computer, or rather, a mechanical calculator Pascal was created in 1642 by Blaise Pascal. Wanting to help his father, who worked as a tax collector and spent a lot of time doing grueling mathematical calculations, Pascal invented a device designed to add numbers up to five digits. 
the following models already worked with 8-digit numbers, however, due to the high cost of manufacturing, as well as not very impressive arithmetic capabilities, only the addition operation was available. The device did not bring commercial success to its creator. The first computer appeared thanks to the perseverance of Charles Babbage, a mathematician and inventor. In 1822 Babbage published a draft of a difference machine designed to calculate the values of polynomials up to the sixth power. Having received a grant from the UK government, the scientists started working. But the task turned out to be time-consuming, instead of three years, construction took more than nine, and the budget grew tenfold. And although some elements of the computer could already work, the government stopped funding, and Babbage's creation was never completed. But in the novel The Difference Machine by William Gibson and Bruce Sterling, Babbage's creation received worldwide recognition, giving impetus to the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in alternative Britain. Already in 1843, the first fax machine of the Scottish inventor Alexander Bain was launched. Before that, he managed to patent the first electronic clock, took part in laying telegraph lines from Edinburgh to Glasgow, and also came up with an electronic timer for train locomotives. The next innovation was a matter of time. Bain's fax machine worked on the principle of devices that transmitted sound. Although sending a single message took 20 to 30 minutes, by 1899 most British publishers had acquired such a device, fax was faster than courier delivery. The pioneer of the video game industry was an arcade game about space battles with aliens, released in 1948, long before the advent of normal computers. Thomas Goldsmith Jr., a professor in the field of physics, together with his colleague Astel Ray Mann wrote a simple game to demonstrate the capabilities of the new computer. It was possible to aim and shoot at the enemy by twisting special handles. Now almost any digital device can measure the distance traveled. The first mention of a mechanical device with such a function, the odometer, is found in Greek manuscripts of the 1st century BC. The author of the invention is not exactly known. It was probably the same Heron of Alexandria, who also invented a self-loading crossbow, a steam turbine and even a mechanical puppet theater. The Romans had a similar device for determining distance, and they used calculations to improve their legendary roads. In the 1920s, the first navigator for terrain orientation was invented. Heath Robinson's navigator resembled a clock consisting of a set of paper cards that had to be scrolled with wooden handles. Ten years later, a new Iter Avto navigator was connected to the speedometer, and the maps began to scroll automatically. However, after turning onto a new road, the driver had to replace the map and set his new location on the device. The most incredible invention of the early 20th century was the progenitor of the modern Google Earth. In 1908, the pharmacist and part-time amateur photographer Julius Neubronner patented an unusual camera. A device with a timer for automatic photography was attached to the pigeon, after which the bird took off. In 1909-1911, the works of the resourceful photographer received worldwide recognition at exhibitions in Dresden, Paris and Frankfurt. Although with the development of aviation, the demand for such a survey came to naught, Neubronner's idea formed the basis of the current Google Earth. The most popular gadget of our time, the mobile phone, was invented in 1957 by the Soviet radio engineer Leonid Kuprianovich. This device weighed 3 kilograms, but could catch the network without interference within a radius of 20-30 kilometers from the base station. Within a year, the weight of the device was reduced to 500 grams, and by 1960 a sample of a pocket telephone was ready. Of course, there were no buttons then, only a disc mechanism. Mankind invented hang gliders, batteries and even plastic surgery long before they came into use. Our ancestors outwitted nature and outstripped progress by several millennia. Therefore, it may well be that soon the most incredible devices from fantastic books will become an everyday reality.